much for tuning into tonight's service. Thank you so much for being patient with us through technical difficulty. Yes. We really appreciate your patience in um, doing this with us tonight. I'm so excited to get into the word. I'm so yes. excited to continue on our study of the Lord's Prayer. But firstly, I wanted to give you the opportunity to share any prayer requests yes. that you may have, as well as any praise reports. We love hearing what the Lord is yes. doing for you. It is it's so incredible mm -hmm. to, you know, you've got firsthand experience about who the Lord is to you. Yeah. You've got firsthand experience about all of the prayers that he is answering. Mm -hmm. It's so incredible that we also have the opportunity to share that with you. So thank you for doing that. Please share your praise reports. Yes. Please share your prayer requests as well. We thank you so much for doing that. Amen. I also wanted to give you the opportunity at this time to text the word GIVE to the number 1-214-949-8858. Um, again, the number 212, no. 1-214-949-8858 to text the word GIVE. And let me tell you right now, when you give and you begin to sow into the word of God, into the word that is coming forth to you, not only every Sunday and every Wednesday, but in every single post that New Beginnings has given, I encourage you to sow into that word. What yes. you're doing when you sow into the kingdom of God, you are a part of the family of God. And so you qualify for that harvest. Every harvest that New Beginnings gets, you're going to get a piece of it too. You're going to get a piece of the piece. Amen. You're going to get a portion of the breakthrough. As we come together corporately and we give, you know what? There's corporate breakthrough. There's corporate healing. And we may not be together physically, but when you come under the umbrella of New Beginnings Christian Center, you come under the umbrella of that prayer as well. You get covered in that prayer. That's what you're doing when you send in those praise reports and those prayer requests for covering you in prayer and with the Word of God. And the Bible says the Word is quick, it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes, absolutely. And we just thank you so much for continuing to send in all of those prayer requests. We love the opportunity to pray with you for sure. Thank you so much for doing that. Again, you can text or give one two one four nine four nine eight eight five eight. Amen. Um, so today we're going to be moving along in our study of the Lord's Prayer. I'm so excited to get into this today. Um, this past Sunday, too, I wanted to encourage you, if you haven't had the chance to listen um, to this, the message from this past Sunday it was called Don't Look Down. Yes. It, oh my goodness, I needed that word. And it's been oh. stuck in my head ever since Sunday. <laughs> it was so powerful. Thank you, Apostle, for yes. laboring in the word for us. We're so appreciative of all of your uh, study that you continue to do. Um, so thank you for your faithfulness in doing that. And again, thank I encourage you, you, if you haven't had the opportunity to listen to it, you can go on our website, newbeginningschristian.com, and take a look at that. It is, it's so powerful. And it goes right into what we're going to be talking about today. So I want to, uh, if you haven't done so yet, get out your pen, your paper, your Bible. You're, you're not going to want to miss. Get that what sword. We're yes, your sword, for uh -huh. sure. It is so... Uh, it is going to be really good information for you. So <laughs> I want to start off by reading in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13. It says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we haven't moved on from verse 9 quite yet. So today we're going to be breaking down that phrase, in heaven. And this past Sunday, if you listened to that message, if you had a chance to, it, Apostle broke down a couple of key phrases. And it is super 
prevalent and very important for what we're going to be talking about tonight. But why don't you break down in heaven? Well, that word in heaven, well, we know where heaven is. And when the Bible says the word heaven, it simply is describing the realm in which God lives. Right. The realm in which God, uh, this is, wow, it's specifically in the Greek, uh, it's something that is above. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when people say heaven, they point up. Right, right. Well, that's true because heaven is above. And what makes it above? Simply the fact that that is where God makes his dwelling place. Right. That is what makes heaven higher than the earth. Right. Amazing. It is. So that amazing. word in right there, in heaven, means it's a it's denoting a fixed place. Right. Interesting. Denoting a fixed place. Uh, we are addressing a father who is not fixed in this earthly realm. Right. Some hear that again because that is a loaded statement. <laughs> we are not addressing our father in the earth. Right. We're in, not in a temporal realm. Mm -hmm. Right. Our father is not fixed in this earthly realm. He is our heavenly father. So he is in a heavenly realm. Right. Let's think about why that's important for us to know. Well, it would it not be more comforting to address him as our father who is beside us or even our father who is in us and while those things are true this is not where we address our prayer mm -hmm. why because if we are expecting God to answer from where he is mm. because if we are in a dry and a barren place I don't want God to answer my prayer from dryness and barrenness. Right. You want him to answer you from prosperity and from health. And yes, absolutely. Abundance. And this is where God dwells. He dwells in the realm of more than enough. Because mm -hmm. in heaven, there is no sickness. Right. There is no fear because the presence of the Lord is there. Right. And where, there's no depression in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy and yes. there's freedom yes absolutely while it is true that god is beside us and we receive the holy ghost he abides in us this is not where we address our prayers he is our father in heaven and he will answer from heaven a place with no limits so powerful. a place where the victory has already been won eternally eternally that's so powerful uh, it's so powerful isaiah 55 and 9 said as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Yes. And I don't want to rush past this. Because we're going to get, this is very exciting. And you think, you're not even past verse 9. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> the Lord, He created this framework for us to work from because right. He wants us to be successful. Right. And so I'm going to study this framework because I want my prayers to be successful. And not just be successful, but understand why they are successful. Right. right. Right now we are turning the key in the lock. We're unlocking some heavenly revelation right now. And I hope that this encourages you. And I hope that you're tuned in and you're really paying attention. Because we're going to open up some stuff today. And it's going to take some thought. And it's going to take some faith as apostle right. told us on sunday faith that is yes it's going to take some creative thinking because our god is a creative god all right. you have to do to know that our god is a creative god is look outside right look around look in the mirror who could have come up with that right and that no two faces are exactly identical and no two trees are exactly alike that our god is so creative that he came up with Everything that you see and the systems that are running your body right now down to a cellular level, he created it. Our God is a creative God. Mm. And so in order to understand his ways, we need to access some creative thinking. Right. So he says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Yes. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So that being said... We want God to answer us from not our ways and right. not our own level of thinking. So when you address him as our father who art in 
heaven, you're asking him, God, apply your higher mm. knowledge. Apply your higher ways to my ways. Right, to the situation that I'm bringing before you. Exactly. Amen. Mm. It's so powerful. Within the next few verses of Isaiah 55, man, this was so neat to look into. <laughs> oh, he gives a literal, like a juxtaposition between what that looks like in a natural sense. He's like, let me tell you how it works whenever you access heavenly things with your prayers and it comes into this earthly realm. It's kind of like the rain coming down from heaven. Hmm. As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word go forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy. This is yes. his word, prospering in the mission that it was sent to accomplish. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break Forth before you into singing. Wow. In other words, all creation is going to celebrate with you. Mm. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. In other words, instead of that thing that was barren. Choking the life out of your promise. Ah, come on. Mm. It shall be to the Lord for a name and even an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And that's what happens when his word comes in and he begins to speak his word into your situation right. as the heavens are higher than the earth. That's where we're praying, our Father which art in, in heaven. heaven. Yes, absolutely. That's so powerful. Um, Apostle this past Sunday talked about faith is. Yes. And boy, that, that phrase just has stuck with me this whole week just literally been stuck in my head you know when you get a song stuck in your head well mm -hmm. that faith is has been stuck in my head and in, in preparation for tonight's service and in my personal prayer time i've just been trying to get a grasp of eternity mm -hmm. and that's so difficult for us to do right there because we live in such a temporal world ruled by time ruled by time and it's very difficult for me personally to get a grasp and get a hold of what eternity really is like and it's the same kind of a a thing with this word is as apostle mentioned it's an action word mm -hmm. it doesn't stop it just is it continually forever for all of eternity is right it's so so incredible to be mm. able to describe God as one thing and know that he will not right ever not be that right exactly he will always be your healer mm -hmm. and the amazing thing about it is that the more that you call on him and the more that you need him he's always going to show up at the level that you need him and sometimes even more even more so. It's it's incredible too that he will he'll never be less than what you need. Right. He will always be that and more than enough. Mm -hmm. more above what you could ask, think, or, or imagine. imagine according and to his power that worketh in us. Yes. Our faith is constantly being challenged. That's the power that worketh in us. Right, our Go faith ahead. constantly being challenged. We encounter situations on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. You know, your coworker said something about you, and then you, you know, it's 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 everything. It happens all the time. It's, there's a situation with your family. It's always something, right? Oh, something happened with my car. Oh, I forgot to get gas. Oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's always something, and our faith is constantly being challenged to grow. Mm -hmm. But what, when we continually acknowledge who God is, he meets us at the level of our growth and yes. then some and calls us higher. And that's what we're doing when we're saying our Father who are in heaven, mm -hmm. that's what we're continually saying every time we go in prayer. We've got that new dimension and the new level of understanding of what that means for him to be in heaven for you specifically. Right. And you know what that means? That's so good, Hannah, because you know what that means for us, people of God? Prayer 
when you get invested in prayer, prayer mm -hmm. will never get old. No, it never will. And I want to also just make this note because somebody just said, mm. <laughs> so I just said, I'm not sure about that. Yes, because once we understand, just like faith, because faith is not about feelings and neither is prayer. We're not saying you're always going to feel like praying because you don't always feel like praying. Right. Just like with your faith. If your faith is as limited as your feelings, it will not go very far. Wow. I, that's Just so like true. your prayer. How quickly can our feelings change about something? Right. You know, oh, I really like this show. Oh, one episode happens and you're like, oh, huh, never mind. I don't like it anymore. Right. What exactly. if our, our faith, thank goodness, doesn't work like that? And our right. prayers shouldn't work like that either. Thank right. Goodness. <laughs> and that's another thing that's important about praying to our Father, which is in heaven, is we need to start taking on his mindset right. as we're praying. We are no longer speaking to the earthly realm. We are speaking to a heavenly realm. And we need to start thinking in a heavenly realm. Right. That, what you're doing right there, when you're setting in gear, our Father, which are in heaven, right there, you just left your home, you left the United States of America, <laughs> and you are entering into the country of your true citizenship, which is the kingdom of God, that operates in totally different laws, a totally different language. It's a faith language because here on the earth, we operate most of the time in a doubt language, in a complaining language. A negative, right. Right there, when you are setting yourself up for prayer, our Father, there's your access, who are in heaven. That's where you're accessing to. Right, exactly. And I want to jump in here and read you Psalm 113, verse 5. It says, Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high. Mm. And let me answer you, King David. Um, no one. Um, <laughs> but right there, the Hebraic phrase, who is like unto our God, it breaks down to mean Jehovah, the existing one, mm -hmm. who dwells on high. Jehovah, the existing one. He continuously is. Yes. He is always exactly what your situation calls for. Right. He is always exactly what you need him to be, even if you've never needed him to be that thing for you. Mm -hmm. For example, what do you mean by that? Thank you for asking, as Apostle always says. Um, I've, thank goodness, thank God, I've been very blessed. I've never experienced severe illness. Mm -hmm. But if I were to experience something like that, he would then become a healer that I'd never known him to be. But does that mean he had never been a healer before? No, I just didn't have to access that part of him. Right. He continuously is. Yes. Regardless of the situation that you go through, no matter how bad that it gets, he will always show up for you right then and there. And that's what that means when we're praying in our Father who art in heaven, we're accessing the fullness of who he is right in that moment. Right. And I think that's why Jesus put it right here at the beginning mm -hmm. so that we understand we cannot move past this point until we come to an understanding. Right. Because the Bible says, he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. So when we're coming to the access point, our Father who art in heaven, we must believe, as Hannah says, that he is. Right. And it doesn't just mean, I believe in God. It means that you believe. If you are coming for healing, I believe, God, that you are my healer. Right. Full assurance. Yes. Fully assured that every single thing that you need him to be right then, right there, and forevermore. Because once you've asked him and accessed that part of him, he doesn't just stop being that for you. Right. And we come holy and reverently. Just like the next part of the verse, which we're going to uh, break down here next time, hallowed be thy name. We're not coming to God because we've got to be careful right there as we're breaking this down. I don't want us to get the impression that he is our do boy. Oh, no. Absolutely as Apostle not. has used that phrase before <laughs> because that is not In how we, right. No, that no, is not we, how we come to God, yeah. but we must believe. And in, in saying that, God, I believe that you're my healer, you're, you're putting him in that supreme position. 
and that you in turn are in the place of need. Right. In humility. Absolute humility. Right. Wait, but there's no there's no other way around it. Coming to him as his child. Right. Saying, I believe that you are my healer. Right. And if you're in luck, I believe that you are my portion. The Bible says he's my treasure and my reward. Right. Coming to God and saying, you are what I need, Lord. Mm. Mm. Ha. You must do so from a place of faith. This is what it means to acknowledge him as our father who art in heaven. In other Absolutely. words, when you're praying for healing, as we just said, do so with the assurance that you believe he is my healer. Right. Right. He is my deliverer. God's address is not in a limited dimension. Right. It is in an unlimited dimension. Where you enter into prayer, you are stepping outside of the bounds of your present reality. Mm. And you're entering into God's limitless storehouse. That's so good. That is so good. Apostle has said that before. Yes, he has. Prayer is access to the limitless storehouse. Mm. Mm. It's so powerful. And... Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 it's just it's the go-to when you're talking about faith but it's so powerful too and we don't want to just skim over this because so many of us know Mm -hmm. about Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 through 3 but it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good report through faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. Mm. <laughs> That's so good. So, so powerful. Good. I hope that y'all are catching this here tonight. It says in Luke chapter 1 and 37, For with God nothing shall, shall be, be impossible. impossible. The first step in prayer is a confession and then a step of faith out of your present reality and into God's reality. Faith reality is totally different from the one that you see. Because what does faith and heaven have in common? You cannot see it. Yeah. Why do you need faith for something? Because you can't see it. Yeah. Man. Mm. It's so powerful. And then here we go. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14 it says, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. Mm. There is absolutely nothing that can stop the will of God from happening. And there is absolutely nothing that can undo it, what God has done. Right. I want to read in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. It says, the eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. Mm. The eternal God is your refuge. So it reminds me of a passage in the word about a king named Hezekiah. Mm. It's so powerful. When the enemies of Israel sent the king this threatening letter Mm -hmm. saying, we're going to destroy. We're going to destroy. Trying to incite fear in the camp of the Israelites, trying to make Hezekiah become afraid. Hezekiah literally laid the threat before the Lord. Yes. Why don't you read that for us, Brooke? Hmm. Out of Isaiah chapter 37. Then, starting with verse 15, Hezekiah prayed to the Lord saying, O Lord of hosts, listen to that, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, Hmm. you are God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O God, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, the enemy, which he has sent to reproach the living God. Mm. You see, Sennacherib sent the letter to Hezekiah. Right. But Hezekiah says, this letter which he has sent to reproach the living God. Right. Mm -hmm. He is our father. And he has taken us as his children. And so an offense against the children is an offense against the father. Right. That's part of that confession. Mm-hmm. And this is, that's where the power comes from. Truly, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste to the nations and their lands. He's laying it out before God saying, Lord, this is what they've done to other nations. Right. And they have cut off and cast their gods into the fire. They were not gods, but they were the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, 
O Lord, our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord alone. Mm. And this is God's response. Verse 29. <laughs> but you rage against me. He's talking to Sennacherib, the enemy. But you rage against me and your tumult. I, it has come up to my ears. How did it come up to his ears? Through Hezekiah's prayer. Right. Expose the enemy to God. God sees it already. He just wants you to confess it to him and say, Lord, this is what the enemy is doing. And that, that's what Hezekiah did. And this was the Lord's response. Because your rage against me, Sennacherib, and your tumult have come up to my ears through Hezekiah. Therefore, I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips. And I will turn you back by the way you came. That is the Lord's answer to the enemy for messing with his children. There is power in your confession and in your prayer. And God answers you and he also answers the enemy. Wow. Did you see that? Yes. How Hezekiah got his answer when God answered the enemy and said, those are my children. Right. That's my chosen people. That happened to the enemy. And this is what Israel got. He said, in verse 31, you shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. So the people of Israel got a blessing and the enemy was turned around from the way that he came. But let's look at the initial address. This is how Hezekiah addressed God. In my very last page here, he made a few confessions about God. Right. That's what we do. We say, our Father who art in heaven. heaven. Yes, there's so much that's wrapped up in mm -hmm. that. It's, it's the so address much. that he was writing on. Sennacherib sent him a letter, but Hezekiah was sending a letter to God. He didn't answer back the enemy. He answered God mm -hmm. in his own letter. And he says, oh, he that dwelleth between the cherubims. Mm -hmm. In other words, that's the mercy seat. The Lord's presence in Israel. The evidence that God was on their side. The things that every time that the enemy broke into Israel, they tried to steal the ark because they knew that's the presence of the Lord. That's where their victory is found. And so Hezekiah is calling on the Lord saying, you who dwell in the middle place, mm. in the mercy seat, in the place of our victory, the evidence to all the other nations that you are for us our and not against us, our, our salvation. There's so much wrapped mm. up just in that first confession. Mm. Oh, He's saying you're present here with us. And then he says, you alone are God of all the kingdoms of the earth. Right there, you, he could have put in parentheses, including Sennacherib. Yes. He said, you are God. You have no rival. You are supreme right. of all the kings of the earth. Mm. Mm. King yes. of kings and the Lord of lords. He says, you have made heaven and earth. You are the living God. That word living means quick. Where else do we see that? The word is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It has the power to divide. It has the power to bring together. Right there, that's what you are doing. That's what Jesus was saying. Our Father who art in heaven, right there, right. you are doing a number of things. You are not only acknowledging to God, I acknowledge you as supreme, as above, I know your ways are higher. Mm. I know your thoughts are higher. But you're also announcing to the enemy, my God's ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. What did you say? Who is like the Lord who dwelleth on high? Yes. He's in that high place. It doesn't matter what battle you're in. He's in the high place. He's in the vantage point. If you're in the middle of the flood, he is in the hills that cannot be flooded. Because mm. what does the Bible say? I turn my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. Yes. My help comes from the Lord, the, the maker of heaven and earth. earth. Yes, where do we go? Where do people go when they're trying to escape a flood or trying to escape natural disaster? To, high to a high place, mm. to high ground. Get to high ground. Yeah, he that's what we're doing. High ground, Ooh. right there. When you run in prayer, you are. it's not retreating. It's going to a place of defense. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run in, and they are, are saved. saved. Yes. Right there, you are entering in, in the very beginning of your prayer. Just know that prayer is a safe place. Yes, and I want to close with this. For if you mentioned it just a few moments ago when you were talking about the realm that we approach the Lord in, but it's truly stepping out 
of our moment, stepping out of the situation and stepping into the eternal of God. Yeah. The existing one. Mm -hmm. Who is like unto the Lord? Who is like unto the Jehovah, the existing one? Mm -hmm. We're bringing him into the situation. Right. Mm. He's not limited by time. He's not limited by the things that are limiting us here on the earth. Right. Or the situations that seem to be so insurmountable. Mm. It's so incredible when we take a step out of right where we are and step into the eternal. And I've heard Apostle and Pastor talk about it so many times. Mm. Moving into the heavenly realm and seeing, seeing your situation from there. So, right, from his point of view. Exactly, his point of view when we're going into prayer. And it's incredible that we have the opportunity to do that every single time that we go before the throne. And I'm, in, I'm encouraged in doing this study that we have the opportunity truly to have the understanding and the fullness of how to pray. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you've been encouraged today and that you've gotten a really good you know, idea of what that's truly like to um, go before the Lord, to confess who he is and confess who he, oh, yes. who he is. is right there, right there. Uh, I can't get away from it. It's so powerful. It is incredible. Confess who he is. Mm -hmm. And when is he like that? He just is eternally eternally he is he's the yeah. answer to every single one of our problems and i'm just so thankful that we have the understanding to be able to captivate that in our yes. prayers amen i hope that you've been encouraged today in in this study and i encourage you to continue to tune in with us on wednesdays i also want to encourage you to tune in on sunday at 10 a.m we're going to be um having our Sunday service. We want you to join in with us. And as we can see here, <laughs> so if you could please text the word give to the number one, two, one, four, nine, four, nine, eight, eight, five, eight to give your tithes and offering and follow any of the other options down at the bottom of the screen. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing that and your continued support in doing so. Thank you for tuning in again with us and engaging with this service today, uh, for sharing this with your friends or uh, just liking the post, sharing your praise reports, sharing your uh, prayer request. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for tuning in tonight with us, and we hope to see you here on Sunday. Amen. Success to the kingdom of God and success to you.